Hi everybody, it's my little flicking feathers again today. And I'm tying Keith's crab for you. Um, this is a pattern that was I first saw this years ago, and uh, I think it was Fly Fishing and Fly Tying magazine, maybe. Um, and it's a Keith Rosinus pattern. So you probably heard of him if you fish salt water. Just uh, that's with Alphonse Fishing Company in the Seychelles. Nice simple crab. Uh, I'm tying a few up to give them a try. So it's a fairly small crab. Um, and in the magazine, it recommends that a say 6 to a 4 standard sink salt water. So this is a Gamakatsu SL11. 3H size 6, which might be kind of more like a 4 um, if you have got to use like a uh, like a TMCO or a Mustad or something like that so as always the full material list will be in the description and there will be a link to Patreon um, where you can find out about the giveaways and some social media as well so I've started some tan thread, just danvils, and I've just coated the shank to, and I've stopped about halfway between the point and the barb. I'm going to get a, some tan marabou. A wee tuft, a wee sort of tail to represent the mouth parts. Don't you go nuts. What it is, I'll just tie it in as is, but let it sort of roll around the shank, and you can just. Just that to suit yourself. Trim away the waist, the length of the the body. Just tidy all that up. You don't need to be super fussy. Now can I nip that off? Where I want it a bit there. Legs. Uh, Orange grizzly flutter legs, or just orange and black barred orange legs. I like these grizzly flutter legs. Catch the man on my side. Couple of wraps, pull them around to the other side, take a few wraps, and you can mess around with them a wee bit, sort of twist them, pull them, make sure they're sitting in a way that you like. You know, you if if they don't sit right, you'll you'll probably not be as confident fishing the fly. I'm just going to take a wee wrap there just to cause them to flare slightly. Just figure it through. So they'll get swept back too much into the tail. Just trim these so they're roughly even, slightly longer than the the marabou, maybe half again the length of the marabou. Um, eyes. I've, I've actually seen pictures of these various places, both with and without eyes. Um, I'm going to add them, just as a wee sort of confidence uh, builder. Maybe it doesn't actually matter that much, but... So I've just got, these are just the uh, 
the epoxy eyes. I'm just going to crush the stock and bend it slightly. It just really helps with your tying in. And I've lined them up so I know that the flat, if I tie them in at the flat spot, they'll be. Mm -hmm. I've just got to take these eyes, off all them in, make sure your legs are sitting how you like them. I like them kind of snug the back into the hook here, um, so that you get, you know, they're not sticking away out there in close to the body. And I'll just take my thread back, touch and turns. Is if you moisten the marabou, you can get in, take a couple of wraps just to widen these a wee bit and wrap over. At this stage, I'm just going to take the thread all the way to the front. Tidy everything up. That's nice and durable. I like to just give it all a quarter super glue, let that soak in. And you, you mean your eyes will never fall out or anything like that. Don't let it run onto the feather or the freed section of the rubber leg. If you get any excess, just touch it quickly to set it up. And then invert your flat. I mean, you might need to invert the hook if you don't have a rotary vise, or just turn it over. And then the body's just some chunks of tan sparkle yarn. Well, Aunt Lydia is. You could use EP fibre, but I quite like the rug yarn. It's it's um, very easy to tie in because it's a yarn. It's, until you brush it out, it's, it stays together nicely. Just t figure out that in, and I like to wiggle it right back until I'm at the tie in point of the eyes. And then I'll take a couple of wraps just to lock the, the turns in. Then it's the same, just the same process. With three turns, turn it three the other way, pull it back as best you can, tie over it to lock it in. Try and keep your bunches nice and close together. I'm just repeating this going back.
so you don't need to worry about tangling up with the, the ones before like you would with EP which is one of the reasons I really like the the sparkle yarn Right, so that's that's the body tied in. Right, should have something like that. You can see there the tie ins all the way along. Now at this stage I actually like to put a wee half hitch or uh, whip finish in. Take my thread away. And I'll trim it. If if I take the thread away, I find that a lot easier. You're not, you can because you can if you take it out the vice, you're not worried about any Not worried about any thread wraps coming off or anything like that or losing your material. Quite like that. I mean, you can be as fussy as you like. Um, what I like to do in my last cut, once I've got it roughly to shape, is just I fold the crab like that, and then sort of make my final trim. <laughs> and that way, you know that um, both sides are even, so you won't it won't spin when you cast. It won't twist up your leader the same. Right, so once you've got it to shape, you can just come in with the Velcro and rough that up into a single mass. You want to, you can come in, trim any wee extra bits. There you go. Start my thread again. I'll tie in the weight. Um, so this is, I've got about a 20 pound nylon and I've crimped on a BB shot, lead free shot, non-toxic, painted it white. You can use whatever size shot you like uh, to suit your con your fishing conditions, uh, make sure it's heavy enough. So, dead easy, tie this in long. wraps and just just put it back to it's about the middle of the crab so crank down nice and tight we've got a super glue to help hold it Fold that back just for security. That way it's never going to come out. Trim away the waste pieces. You don't need to worry about them being super tidy because you'll never see it. It'll never be seen. And that's 
I mean, you could leave it like this. This is just that's the crab's tide. Um, I'm going to stick a coral guard on just for me. Uh, there's no, you know, if you if you don't like it on the water, you can take it away. But if you're fishing somewhere with a lot of coral and stuff, these can make some difference. Um, but as I say, if you don't want it, leave it out. And I'll just put finish it behind twice. Again, it's going to be. I don't know where I'll be fishing, this won't be sand flat, so it'll be hard, hard coral. So you need something tough. Can we touch a super glue? And then I'll trim. Trim my weed guard or my coral guard, whatever. Right there, that's fine. That's just twenty pound hard island. And there you go, Keith's crab. Simple wee crab farting. Easy enough to tie. I mean, obviously I'm gonna explain the things. I'm gonna be a bit slow, but you can, you know. Tie these up pretty quick once you get in the way of it. So, hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If it was, please uh, remember to subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up below. Tell guys. Bye.